This is the fifth video in my Clean Code series based on Ryan McDermott's article. This series is about how to write clean code that is readable, reusable, and refactorable. Now I will talk about classes. It's always better to write small functions than classes, but if you do need a class, you should use ES6 classes instead of how classes are created in ES5, especially if you need inheritance. So let me show you how an ES5 class looks. This is the bad way to do it. So here is how you used to do it when you were um, using ES5 if you wanted inheritance. I'm not going to go through all the details because again this is not how we want to do it. But um, we would create an animal and this is how you would create the, the animal class and you could add a move function to it. And if you wanted to inherit from the animal class, you're going to create mammal and you are going to have to um, call the animal class with and pass in the age, but then if you want to add a fur color to the mammal that's different than the animal class, you know, this dot fur color, you are going to um, create this the prototype based on the animal class, you are going to um, create what the constructor is, uh, basically there's a lot of different steps, pretty long compared to what you will see for the ES6 class. So let me show you what the ES6 class would look like. And I just pasted that in. And you can see this is much shorter. This is the whole thing right here. And it's, so it's a lot more readable. This ES6 class is a lot more readable than you see what this ES5 class looks like. So we're going to create the class animal, you're going to have the constructor where you pass in the age, you're going to have the function move which is not defined in this example, but we have the mammal which is going to extend the animal, that's how you're going to do inheritance, and you're going to do super age which passes in the age here, you're going to create the fur color, uh, create the, the live birth function that's in the mammal class but not the animal class, and then we have the human class which extends mammal class. You're going to pass in three things in the constructor, but it's going to do super age and fur color, where this is just going to call the, the previous function the mammal function, which is then going to pass the age to this function. Then you're going to create your, your new uh, language spoken variable here, and you, create, you can create a new function here. Uh, basically the point is that it's just a lot easier to read. Now let's go on to method chaining. Method chaining allows your code to be more expressive and less verbose. The easiest way to explain method chaining is just to show you. So first I'm going to show you what it would look like without method chaining. Now this is the bad way to do it. So if you create a class and you're going to have the constructor here and this is some of the default values and then you can also um, have these functions where you can set the make, you can set the model, you can set the color and then you would save the class using this function which is not, the save is not fully implemented but just as an example it's going to console.log these things. When you're creating a car class you're going to do const car equals new car, car that set color pink, car that set color four, car dot set model F150 and then car that save. Now let me show you what it would look like with chaining. It's mainly this part right here that it's going to be a lot simpler. So let me put in the, the good way which is how you do method chaining. Now when you're creating a function with method chaining you're just going to return this at the end of every function. So everything is the same in this new class car except we have this line at the end of each function. Uh, we're going to return this, 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 and this allows us to do something different. First let me show you what it used to look like. When you we were creating a car we were saying we had to do car that set color, car that set make, car that set model, car that save. Now since we've returned the car object at the end of each function, we can just do this. We don't have to do car dot set color, car dot set make, car dot set model. We can just do dot set color pink, dot set make, dot set model, and dot set save. Because up here, after the function is is run, it's going to just return undefined. And then when you try to call another function, if we did set color 
pink and then we put dot set make without putting the car here it's going to say that it cannot call this function on undefined because we're not returning that car again at the end of the function but when we return this at the end of each function um, if after it sets the color to pink it's going to return the car object so on that same car object you can set the make and then you can set the model and then we're just chaining the methods one after the other okay the last thing I want to talk about is that you should prefer composition over inheritance inheritance is like what we did up here where we did mammal extends animal human extends mammal that's inheritance human is inheriting from mammal mammal is inheriting from animal composition is when you have one class that's referenced from another class but you don't necessarily extend that class um, I'll show you an example but it's good to know that there are actually good reasons to use inheritance and good reasons to use composition but you should try to use composition over inheritance when possible well let me show you an example of the composition and inheritance so here would be the bad way to do it with composition and so well, we're going to create the class employee which is going to have this constructor name and email and then we're going to create the class employee tax data and say extends employee so employee tax data is inheriting from employee but it says right here this is bad because employees have tax data employee tax data is not a type of employee and it, you're going to use composition when you have a has a relationship like employees has a or have tax data you're going to use inheritance when you have an is a relationship like a human is a animal or is an animal if you want to add tax data you're not just going to extend employ and add the tax data here you are going to use um, composition so let me show you what that would look like so in this composition example you're still going to have two classes so first we're going to define the employ tax data class with the social security number and salary and then we're going to define the employee class but not, none of the classes are going to extend from another class we are just going to use the employee tax data class within the employee class so it says set tax data uh, social security number and salary uh, this is just a function or a method of the employee uh, class and we are going to say this dot tax data equals new employee tax data social security number and salary so we are just calling this class from within this other class and that's how you would do composition oh whoops this was supposed to say that this is the the good way to do it now there are some good reasons to use inheritance even though it says bad up here it, you just have to think through what your your actual problem is so if you have an is a relationship then you should use inheritance like the human is a animal like I said or but if you have a has a relationship like if you have user and user details a user is not user details but user has a detail then you would use composition also you should use inheritance if you can reuse code from base classes like humans can move like all animals and the third reason why you would want to use inheritance is that if you can if you want to make global changes to derive classes by changing a base class well that's clean code classes thanks for watching my name is Bo Carnes don't forget to subscribe and remember use your code for good